So now we're going to transition into the last segment in supine, which is the uh, head and neck and shoulders. So after working both arms, it's nice to transition with a nice stretch overhead. And then we can just place ourselves above their head. And how we're going to start this particular segment is to place the bottom of our feet on the tops of their shoulders. And you notice I have bended my knee and I'm going to put my hands behind me to support and then we're just going to use alternating compression into the top of the shoulders. Start to loosen the shoulders. Now when you start out wide, you get bigger movements. Uh, when you're over the acromion process, you get bigger movements. Then as you move yourself or your feet more medially, you get more direct, smaller movements. And the angle of the feet also can bring a little bit more okay. specificity. Like when you turn your feet out, the heel can go right into the uh, attachment of lobata. The heel can get into the supraspinatus. Okay, so you can do that adjustment. And then you're just going to press down on one and hold. You notice how this one is almost fully extended and I still have a bend here. And then you release and then compress the other one. And release. And then with the feet still in this position, you're going to move closer to the top of their head. And then the feet are going to pin the shoulders down while your hands come and cup the back of their head. And you're going to have them inhale. And on the exhale, you're going to lift their head and bring their jolly rancher as close to their sternum <laughs> as possible. <laughs> so that they get a nice stretch in their posterior cervicals. And you want to do that a couple of times. And then as you lower the head, you take one foot off of one shoulder, and then you're going to laterally flex. So now this foot is pinning that side of the neck so that you can bring it into a nice uh, supported lateral flexion. And back. Switch feet. And back. And then both feet are on top of the shoulder, and then you're going to put your hands one over the other at the base of the neck and just press down and pull to get a nice traction of the cervical. Feel good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like you ripped my head off, but it feels good. <laughs> okay. You can feel it like all the way down into your like mid-back, or at least I can. It's good. It feels really good. Probably need it. Okay. Now, after that, uh, you want to come even a little bit more closer. And then you're going to uh, take your fingers and you're going to hook them up underneath the occipital ridge. And then you're just going to start, you feel the mastoid processes, and then just come right behind them and hook your fingertips up underneath the occipital ridge, and then you just move back. Ooh, I like it. And that gets right in the uh, suboccipitals, gets all those, there's points up in there, gallbladder, triple warmer. Okay. It's kind of... Yeah, it's like a really dull pain up through like the front of your head. Why he's doing it, and then as soon as he releases, it feels awesome. You would take, you would take occipitals. And then, then this the next one is you're going to rest uh, your hands on the mat while you curl your fingers up underneath the occipital ridge and let the weight of their head um, rest rest on the tip of your fingers. So you come in. And you cup the back of the head and then you curl your fingers so that they're going into the suboccipital. So the back of my hands are resting on the mat. Okay. And then you just let the weight of their head come into that a little bit. Okay. And then I think today. So you come out of that and we're going to then bring the head up.
keep on bringing it up until this upper back comes off the mat. So when you have some clearance, you're going to take your feet and slip them underneath their back. And then you're going to lower the head down. So it stretches the neck. Okay, your feet off the so this is what's happening um, underneath the uh, underneath. So I slip my feet in flat. So they're on either side of the spine. But as I lower the head back in this position, I turn my feet on the edge. And this portion goes right into the uh, lateral border of the scapula. And that's what opens the chest up like that. So my feet are basically like this underneath, right up against the uh, vertebral board of the scapula. How's that feel? That's really good. And then in this position, you take your fingertips and then you can just sink right below the clavicle and get on these points. And also the, uh, you know, when you when you have tightness here in the upper pecs, when you stretch and then go into it, it's rather dynamic. So. kyphosis in your lower back. So now this top or the dorsal surface of the foot bent like this supports that natural kyphosis. Oh, lordosis. Lordosis. <laughs> lordosis. In the natural back. So it's like now this dorsal surface is supporting that lordosis in the lower back. Okay. And then you just have your hands here to support and you're going to work your way out pressing up into the back. And then once your heels are out, you use 